In the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. Uh, how I became Muslim. Um, it's going to be about three years going on this July, uh, being Muslim. And my uh, journey to Islam was an interesting one because before Islam, I used to own a nightclub. And I had this nightclub for about two years. And I was 21 when I opened the nightclub. And that club kind of led me more towards Islam. Um, what really happened in that club, we were making a lot of money in that club. I was making anywhere from ten to $30,000 a night, easily on a Friday, Saturday night. And I was very young, making a lot of money at a young age. And the first year of the club, we were doing, you know, very well. Everything was going great, making a lot of money, you know, I was spending a lot of money, you know, I was young, I had money, everything was going great. And coming towards the end of that one year, going to the next year, um, I started going through a lot of issues in the club. A lot of fights, uh, you know, people getting hurt, you know, uh, business was slowing down. Instead of making 10000 I was making maybe 5000 6000 For a nightclub that holds 500 people, that's not a lot of money, you know. So I was a little worried and I come from a Hindu family. My father was a Hindu priest, his father was a Hindu priest, I was supposed to be a Hindu priest. And I was a falling Hindu. I actually, you know, used to pray to the idols, pray to the statues. Every day, every morning I woke up religiously and, you know, prayed to these idols, asked for everything to be okay. You know, Hinduism has a lot of, you know, different idols, different gods. And when I was going through these problems, the first thing that I wanted to do was, you know, go and find out for my family, what should I do? And being a following Hindu family, they advised me to go to the pundit and to do all these different kind of things. One thing come from a Hindu family, these pundits, they do a lot of things that involve magic, but they don't think it's magic. And I kind of got tangled up into that. And when we was going through the issues in the nightclub, he advised me to do certain things. I was getting issues with the police officers. He advised me to do things dealing with mind control for these officers. He advised me to do things to bring people in the door. He told me there was like different kinds of the unseen world, uh, the jinns messing with me from competition clubs that were doing this kind of magic to me and doing these things to bring me down to try to get this location from me. And business was, was basically falling. And then when... I started doing this magic and all these different things that they were doing and at the time I didn't know what it was. I thought this was just part of the religion. Business got better. It got better, everything started improving, everything started going great. You know, I used to get about 30 summonses a week and with this magic they all get dismissed, you know, with no problems. None, everything was just going great. I did this for a while and all of a sudden it just stopped working. You know, this was coming close to the end of the two years and it just stopped working and I didn't know why and I got upset. It came to the point where it was either I close the nightclub and lose over $800,000 or just fight and go to court and do all these different things, which I did. One weekend I spent over $30,000 on lawyers just you know, trying to fight, keep this place open. And then I just got fed up. I said, you know, if I'm doing everything that my religion is telling me to do, if I'm praying to all these gods and doing all these things, why is this bad stuff happening to me? I said, I'm, I'm a good person, I follow all this stuff, and it's the main thing people say, I'm a good person, you know? And I'm following all these things, why are these bad things happening to me? And I got frustrated. And I said, you know what, take the club. And I left it, and I closed it. And it just so happened a week before this stuff was happening, a friend who was very close with me, was with me from the day the club opened, he disappeared for a while. And he was actually learning about Islam. And he showed up that week that all these things were happening to me. He said, you know, what's up? What's going on? I said, everything's okay. You know, everything's, you know, all these bad stuff is happening. He said, well, listen, you know, I'm looking at this thing called Islam. I said, yeah, Islam, those Muslims, those terrorists? You know, are you looking at those things? He said, yeah, you know, they're not what you think they are. I said, really? I said, all right, no problem. I kind of brushed them off and I went about my business. But then when I finally decided to let the club go and just do all these things, I lost over $800,000. I lost a lot of money and I was 23 at the time. I lost a lot of money at a young age and that money is what I worked for. I, you know, my family's not wealthy. Those were loans, those were, you know, credit cards, those were, you know, hustling, doing all these things just to get that money. And I got fed up. I said, you know, if I'm doing all these things for God, I'm following God, why is these bad stuff happening to me? You know, for a kid to go from making ten, thirty thousand dollars a night to have to be negative, it's it's hard. And I said, I'm following God. I'm doing all these things. Why did God leave me? And I said, I don't believe in God. That's it. So I started asking questions. I said, You know what? If there's a God, I gotta find out who this God is because right now I don't think there's a God because I'm doing everything and it's not working. So I started going on this kind of religious quest, what if you want to call it. 
and I started asking a lot of questions. You know, my father had a lot of like Bhagavad Gita's and all these different kinds of books in the house. I started researching them. I looked to Zakir Nai, all these different uh, these dais and stuff, and I noticed that in Hinduism. Even though Hinduism has over, you know, 10, 20, 30, whatever gods that they have, they have a god for everything. The scriptures itself, it says God is one, without a shape, without, you know, a partner, without anything. You know, these scriptures say this, God has no shape, he has no form, he's a formless supreme being. He has no parents, he has no offsprings. And the Hindu scriptures say that the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads, the Purnas, they all scriptures say the exact same thing. But these Hindus, they're following a mythological story. This is what they're doing. And they teach us this, and we grew up with this. You know, this is how I grew up. And I kind of got fed up. I said, okay, if this is not what it is, then what is it? Because I was taught that I'm the greatest of all because I was born a Hindu and you can't you can't just become a Hindu, you have to be born a Hindu. And I said, okay, if this is not it, let me look at Christianity. I said, Christians are cool, you know, they can eat beef, they can eat pork, they can eat all this stuff, it's kind of cool. Because I like to eat. So, you know, I thought it was cool. So I looked into it. But when I started reading the Bible, the Bible is kind of confusing at first. For this, over 500 versions. I don't know which one to read, so I just picked up another one, you know. 500 versions of the Bible, which one do you choose? Which one's, who's right? You know, there's no really, nothing's really right with, with that. And I started reading one version of it. I think it was just the, the, New Testimony, whatever it was, whichever version of that one there is. But when I started reading it, it was very confusing to me. And there was a lot of contradictions because in the Bible it says, you know, Jesus spoke to the Father, but then He is God Himself. And then, you know, He was talking to all these different three people. And if He was God, then who was He talking to? He said, I am the Father, the Son. You know, it was, it was different. And it, it was a lot of contradictions. And so I kind of got fed up. So I went back and I spoke to my friend who was looking into Islam. And he said, let's go check out, you know, let's go get a Quran. So I went, I took a dri uh, drive down to Brooklyn, and I picked up an uh, English translation of the Quran. And if you ever look at the Quran the first time, it's kind of confusing, an English translation, because you don't know what, what's, what's Baqarah, what's Fatiha, what's all these, so you don't know what this is, like, why am I reading about a cow? You know, what is all this stuff? So I just kind of opened it to some random page. And I don't remember the exact ayah, I have it written down, but what it basically, the ayah said to me was that, you know, it was, uh, it was us who, it was we who pulled you from the sin in order that you may return to the straight path. If you revert to your sins, we shall revert to your punishment. Uh, it, we shall revert to our punishment. And I, I don't remember what ayah it was, I think it was Imran, but I'm not sure. But it spoke to me, it says, it is we who have pulled you from the sin in order that you may return to the straight path. If it wasn't for our favor upon you, you would have been the same fire as them. And these are kind of like the context it said. And this is the first thing I ever read in the Quran, and it was just a random page. So I said, wow, you know, what is this? So I started doing research. I started researching the miracles of the Quran, you know, all these different things. And I came across something, you know, called the jinn. And then when I came across what the jinn was and these unseen creatures, and I figured out what I was doing was wrong. It intrigued me. I said, I didn't know this thing existed because these pundits were telling me they were unseen beings and they were, you know, dead people and spirits and all these, these crazy things. And when I finally learned what it was, I was like, man, that's so, that's interesting. And I can't believe I was doing that. And it explained, it talked about tying of the knots and all these different things that we were involved with. And I, I, I intrigued me. And I kind of decided to start reading more, researching more and doing all these different things. And one day I just finally decided to take my shahada. And it's, it's funny because when I took, you know, I took my shahada, the day I was going to take my shahada, it, for a new Muslim, um, it's, it's weird because the moment you're going to take a shahada, these, all these doubts come into your mind. You know, I, I told my father, my father, you know, he was screaming at me, he was upset, he didn't talk to me. And I was like, should I, should I do this? Like, I'm changing my whole life. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And it's all these doubts coming to your mind. You don't know what you're going to do, uh, you know, if you're doing the right thing. And I said, you know what, well, let me just do it. And I did it, you know, I did it in a, in a different circumstance, in the, in the incorrect circumstance, but I did it. And the time that I did it, it was like the most, it was the best feeling I ever had. It was like the, sh the shaitan was coming to me, telling me, don't do it, don't do it. I remember that night, I, I felt so relaxed, so free. It was, it was like a feeling I can't even explain. And my wife also became Muslim, you know, I was with her before that. She is going to be two years Muslim now, this, this June. And it was funny, from that club, I became Muslim. My wife, she used to work for me at the club, she became Muslim. We had one of the dancers from the club became Muslim, and my friend became Muslim. So all from that bad thing, that pinnacle of, of sin, you know, cheating people, liquor, drugs, intoxicants, whatever it may be, Four people became Muslim, and 
that's my story in a nutshell. You know, there's more details to it, but in a nutshell, that's that's basically how it happened.